Welcome back everybody, this is RD Kamikaze performing the test of quarter teaspoon sodium hydroxide versus half teaspoon baking soda all in distilled water. Here's our opponent number one, half a teaspoon of baking soda versus the first person to go, quarter teaspoon of sodium hydroxide aka known as NaOH. N and the OH are capitalized obviously. So let's go. Come in here, turn it on, and let's see a rip. We're not expecting a lot of production, seeing how it's kind of crappy design, I mean. But as we see here, there's a little bit of production. No bubbles, obviously, but let's move on to our other opponent, baking soda. So NaOH, with all these very vain things, you kind of didn't do us too good. But yet again, there is, you know, a quarter teaspoon of you <laughs> in a crappy generator like this. So let's see what happens in the next one. What we're going to do is we're going to use baking soda, since we're going to be using that one right now as our stand. What we're going to do, as you guys can see, is we're taking the lid off this guy. There we go. To get as much solution off as we can. And here we go with baking soda. Alright. Got it nice and tight there. Hopefully, you guys all got that transaction, but. Here is now sodium hydroxide, quarter teaspoon, baking soda, half teaspoon. And our crappy old generator that now is very, very horrible compared to my other ones in production. As we see, there's actually, it looks to be, a little more production with the baking soda. Try not hard to tell, sorry but it's still not nearly sufficient enough to make that thing bubble so good luck for us on measuring the output so with a real fast conclusion for some weird reason half a teaspoon of baking soda was better than a quarter teaspoon of sodium hydroxide. You know what, just for kicks real fast, let's bump this up. Let's put another quarter teaspoon of sodium hydroxide into here. That's probably enough. There we go. There we go. Remember, this is the one eighth teaspoon. Yay! All right. Now, let's check the sodium hydroxide production again. Hopefully, you guys all catch this. can't exactly see it for myself. Try to get off as much as we can of the solution with baking soda. And here we go. Back to the sodium hydroxide. Whoops. 
Got a little connection problem. But that's okay, we're gonna fix it real fast. I don't have the proper connections for half an inch threads, only up to three quarters or something like that. And these are half inch bolts, by the way. Alright, got a nice connection there, kind of. <laughs> so let's try this again. Generator on. Wow, look at that. Quarter teaspoon of sodium hydroxide. Womps a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. Duh! That's what I'm trying to show you guys. Is that production with sodium hydroxide versus production with baking soda is a lot better and you actually end up having to use less as well as the fact that sodium hydroxide when you use it or potassium hydroxide either or the two are better you, you have to use less and it runs cooler versus with the baking soda. It gets really hot and actually boils. And it's better. Use less, like, first one. I don't know. It's just... If you're not using sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide by now, use it. Baking soda sucks. The hydroxides are better. Oh. And everyone remember, of course, visit www.fuel-saver.org You will save some gas, you will learn some stuff, and you will always remember this. You will be the best at HHO.